Today, I'm going to walk you through how to set up and install Dundas BI. After this, you'll no longer need a wizard to help you with the installation. Oh, and I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. As Dundas BI is enterprise software, it needs to be installed on a Microsoft server running IIS. By the way, if you're not familiar with IIS and databases in general, it might be a good idea for you to get one of your technical colleagues involved, as this isn't the same as installing desktop applications. Also, speaking of desktops, for testing purposes, it's fine if you want to install Dundas BI on your desktop or your laptop to do some light exploring. But keep in mind, the application is meant for a real server. And if you choose to install on a desktop, you're very likely going to have to reinstall at some point down the road. So let's get right into it. When you first run the installer, it's going to install something called the Deployment Center. The Deployment Center, think of it as software that helps you deploy all of the pieces that go into Dundas BI as a whole. So install the Deployment Center, it installs, and then from there, you can use the Deployment Center to actually install the application. Once you've got the Deployment Center up and running, you can see on the left-hand side all the different areas and additions to the application that you can do. You can see right from the home page that we want to click the Manage Instance button. This basically gives you two options. You can install an express version, which will essentially set up everything for you using basics and defaults, or you can go through the second option, which is kind of the normal install. That's what I'm going to take you through today because I want you to see everything that's there and understand why you're installing it and what it's for. By the way, if you're ever upgrading Dundas BI to a new version, it's the exact same process. Come back into the Deployment Center with the latest version, go through the instances, and click Upgrade instead. So let's click on Create an Instance. And the first thing you're going to see is a list of prerequisites. Go and quickly check to make sure you have all of these. But if you don't, you can click a Fix button, and that will have Dundas BI automatically install them for you. You don't have to close the application, go out and find these prerequisites and download them yourself. The installer will take care of it all for you. Now the next step is the license agreement. Typically nobody reads these things, so I've got you covered. Dundas BI Software End User License Agreement. The End User License Agreement, the agreement is entered into by and between Dundas Data Referred to www.dundas.com. I hope that's helped you. Now, if you're happy with everything in that license agreement, click that checkbox and of course go next. Now, this next piece talks about instance details and the name of an instance. A common question is what is an instance? Well, what happens with Dundas BI is you can have multiple versions of the application installed at the same time on the same server. So each copy of that installation is an instance. So what we're doing is we're naming the instance that we're installing now. As part of the installation, Dundas BI basically has three pieces. You have the application, you have a database that's used to store information about the application, and we have a warehouse database. So what's happening here is Dundas BI is asking you, where do you want to put that application database? Just for your interest, the application database, let's say you build a dashboard. You've dragged a bunch of things on the screen. You've chosen which data you want to see. That information about what you've done is being stored in the application database. It's kind of like the powerhouse for the entire application. So it's the most important thing just to make the application work. You'll also see that there's two potential database types that we can use here, Microsoft SQL Server or PostgreSQL. Doesn't matter which one you use, but don't confuse these with source databases. These aren't data sources that we're connecting to. These are those databases that are required in order for the application itself to work. You have to do this. While I set up the application database, I need to enter the credentials that Dundas BI will use in order to log in and write and building the tables that it will require. So you do need to fill this in as well. This is the point where I was mentioning if you're not familiar with databases, you really do have to have someone involved at this point. There's another screen for the warehouse database purpose behind this, even if you don't choose to use it in the application, is we set up a database used for warehouse purposes. So if you have your source data and you want to copy some of that into the warehouse database, usually for performance reasons, that's what we're setting up. So it can be the same credentials, same location as the application database we just did, 
but you could also choose to separate it onto a different server if you want. Most people keep both the web application and the two databases along with it on the same machine, but that's up to you if you want to split them out for load balancing purposes. The next is the configuration of the web application itself. So with the web application, we're basically using IIS to host it. Here, you've given the option of adding a new website or adding a virtual directory. If you're not familiar with these terms, these are IIS terms. We're simply setting it out in there. So my recommendation would be to go take a look at the Microsoft documentation to get familiar with these concepts if you've never used them before. This screen here is all about which port you want to use. So if you want to just use HTTP, use the one on the left, choose a port, it's easy, good for testing purposes. If you want to do something a little bit more secure, you can do an HTTP secure connection and provide a certificate as well. So that's up to you how you want to set this up. The next screen, application pool connection. This is the user that Dundas BI uses whenever it needs to access resources on a PC or within your network. So by default, most people do use the network service account that's built into Windows for your server machine. But if you do have a specific user you want to use when accessing material, that's fine. One example of this might be if you have an Excel file on a drive. If you want, by default, Dundas BI to use a certain user to access that Excel file, it would. This can all be, of course, overridden in the Dundas BI application itself, but this is the default that's used. If you don't know, just select the first one. Now this screen here, Dundas BI has the idea of scheduled reports and tasks that can take place. And as part of these, there's a service that needs to run on your server responsible for the scheduling. So it will kick off various processes when needed. If you're just doing some light testing, you don't necessarily have to spin up the service yet. But if you do want to use the full application, absolutely add the scheduler service. This part's important. Make sure as you're adding an administrator account that you know what your password is. You're definitely going to need this right away once you've done the install. You can certainly change it later, but at least for your first login, you need to know what this is. Now with licenses, if you have a license file already, you can simply apply it here by choosing the option. If you don't, it will spin up as an evaluation mode and be fully functional, so that's fine. And if you do go into evaluation mode and you later decide you want to apply a license, you can do it within the application. You don't have to reinstall. This is just a nice shorthand to get you the license file in now, right from the get-go. Now configure email delivery settings. There's some features within Dundas BI that does require the sending of an email, like a scheduled notification to an email or a scheduled report. Maybe you're generating PDF files and you're sending it out to various people. With that, we do need to be set up to be using the email service that Dundas BI can use to actually send these emails out. So you can choose whether or not to configure this now or later. If you've never used Dundas BI before, I recommend you add the Getting Started project, which you can do with a simple checkbox here. This will give you sort of the basics to get you started and just help you along with the new user experience. Finally, the deployment details. This is just a screen where you can review everything that you've told Dundas BI to do before the install starts. So take a quick look, make sure everything's the way you want it to be, and then hit the deploy button. Once you've hit deploy, you'll see that it's gonna go ahead and install everything that you requested as you told it to. Once the install's done, it is gonna give you a summary. So take a quick peek down that list and make sure there's no errors, no features that for some reason couldn't be installed. If you do run into an issue of some kind, reach out to the support team. Support at dundas.com, they'll help you very quickly and get things up and running for you. You also notice at the top of the screen that there's a URL. This is the URL that you set up when you did those IIS settings and the web config. Grab this if you're not familiar with IIS because this will be your entry point into Dundas BI. If you are familiar, you'll know how to get this anyway, so it won't matter. Let's click on that URL and you'll notice that it will take you to the login screen. From here, you can use that admin account that we created to log in and start using the application. So that's it. Now, if you want to learn more, we did a great getting started video. It will give you some great tips for new users of Dundas BI just to get things going smoothly for you. So definitely check that out if you're interested in getting a little bit more of a head start. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.